Next caller is Grant from Arizona. What's up, Grant? How you doing? What's your question? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, my question is, how have you guys helped um, male athletes who struggle with orthorexia? Hmm. Oh, you know, remember we talked about this with uh, with Jason on the show, right? Yeah. Did we get into that with uh, when he was here the first time? Yes, that's that's a really good question. So orthorexia for the listeners uh, is a eating hmm. disorder or a bad relationship with food where everything has to be perfect or healthy. So everything you eat, you need to it has to be healthy, it has to be perfect, and if it goes outside of that, it causes you a lot of stress. And issues, and I would say this is probably most common in the bodybuilding world. Very I was common. Gonna say, yeah, in terms of uh, which sport, I would think that was probably the highest. I saw this like crazy. You know, when we uh, this was really surprising to me. I didn't expect this. I, I expected when getting into competing, I was going to meet all these people that uh, were the smartest, the most dialed, the had the best relationships with exercise and and diet. And it was actually the opposite. I mean, a lot of them they were what they were really good at was being consistent, but part of it was because it was like an issue. You know, they were obsessed, they, obsessed yeah. uh, with measuring, weighing, and tracking. And if they didn't, uh, they would go like off the rails. And so, what I would do in coaching an athlete when I'd see this, this I, I, I've talked to you guys about this off air. Um, I would I would do uh, intermittent fasting for this reason mm. to help break that right. So if it's somebody who has an issue with eating outside of like weighing and everything perfect, challenging them to be like, hey, listen, we're not going to eat for twenty four hours. Mm. It would be it would be really difficult for them to do it because a lot of times it's tied to very similar stuff that you know Sal, you and I have talked about where. You know, I'm I'm afraid if I don't eat these foods or I don't exercise today, like the muscle's gonna fall off. Yeah. And therefore I have to be I have to eat in this these parameters yeah. all the time. Now, Grant, is is this you or is this somebody you're working with? Do you mind if well, I ask? Oh, it's one hundred percent me. Like for the last I don't know, seven or eight years. Okay. Uh, now have you ever dealt with uh anorexia or bulimia or is it just did you go just from you know, re regular to orthorexia or feelings like that? Uh no. Definitely struggled with uh, anorexia. I didn't never got into bulimia because I hate throwing up. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I would I would go off the rails and then I would purge like with exercise or um, doing like the intermittent fasting approach. Got it. Okay, yeah, so, I, I'm definitely not telling you to intermittent fast then. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Good, good no, question. No, that's why I asked you. <laughs> yeah. So so and that's why I asked you that. So now, of course, we're not experts in eating disorders. We've just worked with people um, with nutrition. Now, I would recommend that you work with a uh, professional in this field. So I'm going to speak from a trainer perspective, okay, Grant? In, in my experience, when I've okay. worked with people who have issues with food, uh, like you're saying, orthorexics, I would – and this is not the place you're going to stay, but this is a great place to transition. I would take your focus off of food and put it on performance, mm -hmm. okay? So rather okay. than looking at all your food and I need to eat the right macros – don't worry about that. I want you to look at your performance. How strong am I? How fast am I? What's my stamina? And then if you need more energy, you eat more. If you're too lethargic, you eat a little less. But focus on performance. And in my experience, uh, this is what ends up happening. Your obsession moves from food to performance. And being obsessed with performance isn't where you want to end up. It's just a better place to be uh, or to transition from. Once you move to performance uh, as your sole focus, then you can start to move more towards an intuitive eating point. But in my experience, I have to take that person's uh, obsession away from food. And I can't do that by keeping them mm. focused on food in any way, shape, or form. It has to be focused on something different. And performance, in my experience, seems to be a good, a good place to go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, uh, now, are you? what kind of workout are you following? Uh, right now... I am doing like, um, well, I just, I've been doing kind of like a MAPS anabolic type of, uh, training style where like for a few weeks I'm going, uh, heavy with lower reps and then moderate right now. I just started, um, doing like the 12 to 15 rep range, um, for most of my lifts. So it's, it's more, obviously you guys know, like I'm focusing on getting a pump and getting, um, some endurance in there. Um, and then probably within the next couple of weeks, I'll go back to heavier lifting and, and lower uh, like rep ranges. 
you know, I, I would I would love to see him run something like Maps Powerlift. I was just going to mm-hmm. say that Powerlift like, would be such a great focus right now, just because it'll it will it'll take your mind yeah, off focus on the metrics. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. completely. So you'd be focused completely on strength, and um, I like that. I like what Adam said because it will ensure if you're just focused on strength, you're going to eat sufficiently. You know what I'm saying? And you'll probably be a little looser. Yeah. You might be a little looser with your diet than you would be if you were focused on aesthetics. Does that make sense? Mm. Now are you? Yeah. Sure? Now is that? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask if if you're regimented every single day, weighing, tracking, measuring, or do you allow yourself like weekends or anything to kind of uh, relax? Yeah. So weekends, uh, when I go and visit my parents, they're they're pretty. It's relaxed. Um, but then during like the work week, like I'll, I'll do meal prep. Mm-hmm. because I'm lazy as hell and I don't really want to cook when I get home from work. Um, but yeah, on the weekends, like, um, it's, it's always just kind of freebies. Uh, but it's not like, I don't, I don't ever feel like I'm going off the rails. I'm like binging on stuff. It's just, I'm not really tracking how many calories are in this mm-hmm. dinner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Does especially that cause you- like you guys know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Does that, does that cause you anxiety or uh, cause you said that uh, you don't feel like you're going off the rails. Have you tried, you know, also doing a day here and there during the week? Uh, no, I haven't tried doing a day uh, during the week, um, but it doesn't. It, it causes me some anxiety, um, but then usually because I'm with my family, I'm like, ah, whatever. You know, mm-hmm. it's not that big of a deal. And plus, because I'm so consistent with my training, I'm like, I have, you know, I think you guys could relate. Like, you have that constant kind of a reminder where it's like, well, it's not really going to matter because I know tomorrow I'm going to go and lift anyway. So Mm -hmm. if I have a little extra, it probably will make things go smoother in the gym or in my home gym. The truth is that's the right, that's the right attitude right there to have that during the week. Totally. Yeah. That same, that same idea of like, ah, it's not a big deal. I ate a little more. So I'm going to get after the gym tomorrow, just learning to transition that to the week, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I think the focus on performance, focus on strength and performance is a great transition. Don't end up there because being obsessed with performance can also run its own risks. But you know, I do want to add this. Uh, there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel, and the fact that you're calling and talking to us about it mm-hmm. um, means that you're aware, and that is the hardest first step. I right. mean, to get somebody who has uh, issues with food to just admit is so challenging. So, uh, congratulations on that. Thanks. I I did have a quick question. Um, is Maps Powerlift is that something that can be done at home? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you, long as you got a bar, you got a barbell. If you got a barbell, you're good. Yeah. If you do, you have a barbell, dumbbells, and a squat rack. I have three barbells, a trap bar. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I've got yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're a lot good. Of gear. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. You're good, man. So okay, we're, we're gonna send that to you. Right. Yeah. Unless you got it already, we'll send that over yeah. to you. Oh, get, get you going, man. Oh wow. No. I, yeah. Thank you. No, I don't have that yet. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Excellent. We we appreciate you supporting Mind Pump. I recognize your name. I know you asked me questions before, so thanks for that, and stay in touch. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Let us know. Of course. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, awesome. brother. Thanks. I'm so glad that you asked the question. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, how funny is that? Like, my first initial, I'm thinking, like, competitor, and I used to interrupt the intermittent. And yeah. really, it was to, to make them aware if they even have a problem, right? Yeah. The fact that he is aware of it. And then he's also leaned on the side of anorexia. That'd be awful advice to give him. Would be to be intermittent fasting. Oh, that would be anorexia. That <laughs> so, would be anorexia. Yeah, but you so know what? Such a great, great question. But it's also look. He's a, he's a male, and he's try, and he's in the you know, and he's focused, and he's trying to build muscle. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten times, they didn't have issues with anorexia, and nine out of ten times, it right. was what they would call big orexia. Right. That's so that's yes. I'm so glad you but mm-hmm. highlights this is where uh when we always answer questions when we don't have the actual person okay. we have to say depends Insight yes. helps. Yeah. because yes. it's that's a total different answer if it's somebody who is like a competitor who has the big orexia or whatever versus somebody who's actually had anorexia completely mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. Uh, strategy on how you go about exactly. it. Exactly.